Welcome to The Shack. My name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. And uh, it's a very, very cold Monday morning. Um, I hope that I've got some company in the building. I know that our Paul, he's working with us and he'll be keeping you company and showing you uh, anything that you, if you have any questions, Paul's the person to ask. Now, what you'll notice is that I haven't actually um, got my mic on at the moment because I want to show you a little scarf hack that I found on the internet. And I thought, this is really useful. Good morning, everybody. Come on in. So I wonder if you can hear me because I've got my mic here. If I, if I show you a little a trick how to wear a scarf around your head without it looking like a turban, um, you'll... Um, you'll I'll, I'll keep hitting the mic so i thought i'll wait a moment um is the sound okay paul yeah good i hope so let's have a look um and i'm just going to lay it down gently you can hear me really well thank you hazel that's good to know and uh yeah so how are you i've got my woolly tights on under the jeans which is a nuisance really but it, it they keep your legs warm don't they um, thing is, though, they pull your jeans down all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Grüß dich, Marion, in Deutschland. How, what's the weather like in North Germany, Marion? Let us know. Uh, good. It's good to have your company. I, I looked at the uh, weather report this morning and it seems like the English are going to get an Arctic blast and the Scottish and the Welsh. So it's predominantly up in the north of England. I think we might be OK here in the south. Um, but it was already like minus two, minus three this morning on the ladies mile coming into work. So, um, so I want to show you something Grace sent me. So Gracie, She's in New, New Zealand at the moment, not New York. New York, it's snowing. She's on the other side of the world in New Zealand at the moment. And she's on the beach. There we are. And she's, she's got sunscreen on. And, uh, and she's walking around in shorts and T-shirts, you know. Funny old world, isn't it? Hey, funny old world. But nonetheless, she sent me this scarf hack. And I'm going to show you because I thought, I'm 65 next, very soon. And I thought, what a clever idea. So let me show it to you, right? You ready? It's dead easy. So you, everyone's got a scarf. Even in the summer, you know, in the evening, you can look like one of those, put a pair of sunglasses on, it looks really cool. So maybe you know this, but maybe you don't. So you've got your scarf, right? And you know, we always, we usually do that, don't we? We usually go around like that. Got it? Yeah? Right. Now, Actually, while we're on the scarf, I know I digress, but this is okay. Because Dee Paramore taught me this one years ago. Go back to the scarf again, right? If you do that, like that, okay, um, it doesn't really keep you really warm around the neck. Watch this. So what Dee does, she takes a scarf like this. I know, they're, they're thinking she's finally lost it. Well, no, she lost it ages ago. But I want to show you this. So now take this one, right, and you, you double it up. So you put it around your neck and it's double. So you've got a loop there like that. And then you've got the two ends. So now put one end through the loop. Got it? One end through the loop. Then twist it, twist it like that. And then put the other one through the little thing. So now when you pull it like this, right, what will happen is it's much warmer around your neck. Okay. But it also doesn't start to, it's, it stays exactly as you put it. And you could pull it. And it's really warm around your neck. Okay. That's trick number one. Hack number one. Right. Here's the next one. This is a really cool one. So you go like that. Are you, are you enjoying this or do you think I'm mad? Well, we know I'm mad. Right. Here we go. So now take that one. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll pop it in there. Okay. So that's gone in underneath now. And then we'll take that one and we'll pop it in there like that. Right, so now you've got you've got that now. So now you're in a blizzard at the moment, right? You got caught out coming out of the shop. It's freezing. So you take this, bring it up like that, okay? <laughs> Pull it down like that, 
right you ready <laughs> it's not that cold in here but when you close it look it can really help and it keeps your neck warm right and you've look see and you've got your head covered and it just gives you that protection okay and did you know all that did you eh <laughs> well i think it's worth knowing isn't it so there you go that's it see so working backwards you take that out of there take that out of there you've wrapped it round like that and then you go in like so so that and you can tighten it see so when you put it on like that when you pull that it goes tight round your ears and keeps your ears warm useful to know friends i know there you go happy monday little scarf hack from barbie <laughs> it wasn't my idea d gave me the first one and grace showed me a youtube for the second one there are loads of them aren't they do you remember when we used to go to the nec um one of my mates she used to sell scarves and it was quite interesting what she could do with a scarf but i never saw that one with a hat like that right so let me just put this microphone on bear with me a minute i'm going to turn the sound off so i've got to weave it in underneath okay hold on a minute There you go. That easy. Is that all right? Is that okay, Paul? Cool. So there you go. Oh, this chair. I'm going to replace this chair, Paul. Either that or the carpet. One of the two. Okay. And relax. So the sound should be good. Reconnected. There we are. Happy Monday. Staying nice and walk. Uh, warm, not walk. Talking a walk, yesterday we were going to go into London to the, do you remember I said that we were going to go up to London to the uh, exhibition at Olympia? It wasn't Earth Court, it was Olympia. We spent about two hours trying to work out how to get there, you know, with the train restricted, tube restricted. Then we thought we'd take, we'd take a, a taxi or an Uber, ridiculously expensive, not from home, but from, say, Charing Cross or London Bridge, too expensive. Then we thought, well, we'll drive. All the car parks because you've got a pre-book all four and in the end i said to dave do you know what forget it because dave's got problems with his knee at the moment i said the last thing we need to do need to do is traipse through london trying to find olympia okay so let's stay at home in the warm with a log fire and i could do some pottery so that's what i did i did some pottery instead and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So there you go. And then I was thinking, let's get let's get on to something, you know, because that's the thing. When you uh, when you're at home, like we are, let's say, I'm a, I'm at Clarity this morning. You can tell the because we've got the builders in over the road. They're building these big million pound homes, so it's just so noisy and muddy. I can't do the shack from home, so I'll come to the office. It's fine. Um, but the, um, what was I saying? The, yeah, so it's really cold. So we're at home, let's say, and it's going to be like this for a few weeks, I'm sure, if not months. We seem to, we, we seem to have a, a, a really cold spell coming over us at the moment, like a blanket. And so I was thinking, I know what we can do because we've done A for Apple and we've done A for Angel. And I thought, how about B for Beach Hut, you know? And the minute I started drawing a Beach Hut for us to doodle today with the letter B, I felt warmer and I felt the imagination takes you to the land of the Beach Hut. And it's, it's very uplifting, you know? So... I thought that would be a really nice thing to do. So that's what we're doing. We're going to draw beach hats. So quick recap, if you're new to the shack, um, then welcome. And we set the pace. We decided that we're going to hang all our doodles on an alphabet. And therefore, 
um, last week, we spent a long time on the A because we were setting the we were setting the, the the we were laying down the ground rules for the letters. Now I reckon we could do a letter a week easily because we meet on Monday at ten and then on Thursday at seven in the evening. So between those two days, we should be able to draw the letter and the and the beach hut. This week we'll definitely be able to do the beach hut. So last week, let's say, we did, let's see, we did the A for angel, didn't we? We did, this was the A for apple. We did an A for apple and an A for angel. And we started with our, our letter like so. So let me find a piece of copy paper and let's go to, let's go to a, to B. So I drew a B, which we're going to do this morning to match the A, which is cool. Okay, we'll do that first. That's not hard because we've got the measurements. And then I thought, well, how about a couple of beach hats? There you go. B for beach hat. Bliss. So I had a little play yesterday in between pottery and lunch. And I thought, you know, we could do a really wonky one, which would be rather nice or we could do a straight one, you know. You, here, this is a little bit more challenging because you have to get all the bars in, all the, all the struts of the steps. But I thought that would be quite a nice thing to do. What do you think? Yeah? So we're going to draw a beach hut and we're going to draw a bee. And look, I had to go with a little boat, did the little figure eight boats that we did in the shack years ago. But I thought the first thing we could do, if you're up for it, is, um, is start with the letter A. So the only thing we need to get started is some tracing paper, uh, a ruler, a pencil. I'll show you what, you know, that's the thing about the shack. You don't need loads of stash. You just need a few little bits. And you know, the other thing is, if you don't want to draw or doodle or color in, or you just want to hang out with us, do you know that's okay too? It's fine. So let me show you what I'm going to use. I'm going to go with the, the I've, got, I've got two rulers for the inch girls and the centimetre girls. Jill Jenkins' birthday today, and she's the same age as her twin brother. Well, that's very, very, that's handy. Happy birthday, Jill Jenkins. So I'm going to use my, um, my rulers. I've got a couple of pencils. I've got a pencil sharpener. This is about the sum of what I use. I've got me embedders there. And the tumble dry sheet, should I decide? I was thinking about, I didn't do it last week. I was thinking about putting an embedder around that. I think that would look really cool. But there you go. Do that another day. And then we've got my colouring pencils, a couple of micron pens. That's about it, really. And, and an eraser. I've got an eraser pencil here. Somewhere is a pink one. There you go. That's all you need. So I've got my pencils. I've got my tracing paper. And I've got my rulers. Let's have a look at the A just to get the dimensions. Seven centimetres tall <clears throat> or two and three quarter inches. Yeah, and then we establish that we're going to put the bars on the letters at uh, four centimetres up and down. There you go, four centimetres to the top bar. So that what I'm saying with that is if we look at this, right, you'll see there that's where I've put the, the middle of the, the letter on the B is there. Okay, right, let's get going, shall we? You up for it? Right, let me get myself a piece of tracing paper and then we'll get started, shall we? There you go. So we'll go, let's do the graphic, let's do the centimetre. Seven centimetres. And then we'll, they'll all be the same then, won't they? So we'll go from there to there, okay? seven centimeters that's the height that we're going for and then oh while we're there we might as well put in the four centimeters rather than the three and a half so the middle is a bit higher we 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 decided that the letters look more attractive when they're um when they're they look more elegant when the middle's a little bit further up so that rather than down here, we put it up a bit so that the B isn't symmetrical 
so that the bottom and the top are the same. See the 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 little opening at the B on the top is smaller than at the bottom. It just looks nicer. Okay, let's have a look. So seven centimeters. Let's give ourselves that that, that because we're going to do a little letter and a big letter. So we'll go seven four just to give ourselves the dimensions there you go just give ourselves a start seven there yeah and four there that would be good right so now we've got our our letter and we we decided to make it well it's entirely up to you do you remember we're looking at all the different sorts of letters and jim kindly lent us his brilliant book be for brilliant OK, all the fonts at the fair. So this is why we were we were looking at this kind of font, weren't we, with that? So let's keep it simple and let's just go for B, B for Beach Hut this time. And we'll we'll start like this. We're going to I want to come like that, make a hook because it, I, I'm going all of my letters are going to look like this. They're nice. They're just, I, I, like, I like it. Right. So we're going to go like that and then I'll come down here like so and then I'll come out like that and then I'm going to come round like that okay this is where you you have to kind of call it air drawing right the bottom could be a bit bigger see it could come out a bit it just it gives it better balance doesn't it so you're going to come out like that air draw there you go Sometimes, if you look at it from a different angle, like if we turn it round like that, you'll see it much, much more easily. So now you'll see that that is a lot easier to draw like a kind of a semicircle. And you know you could just draw around a, you know you could just draw around something, don't you? So here, if you draw it from that angle, interesting how it makes it a lot easier to draw like that, okay? So now let's turn it back on its top end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, this has got to come down like so to there. So it's the same distance from here to here, there, and then to here to here, right? So let's make that wall. If you want to use a ruler, look, don't, don't worry about using a ruler. If you, you do what, you do you, boo, whatever suits you. You can use a ruler. You can always make it look a bit more organic after you, you know you're on the straight. Now, you could turn this round. And again, you see, I find it actually easier to draw it on its side like that. So that looks quite good. And then here, make a dot. You can make a couple of dots. Look. And then you could just join up the dots. See? So now you come around like that. Always make the artwork come to you. It's just easier. There. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, there you go. Who said it was hard? So there's your B. Here we go. Nice. Okay, B. Should we do uh, a lowercase as well? Let's have a look. So there's my B pretty much identical let's go for a, a a lower case and you'll see here that the the bottom half stays below the four centimeter line okay should we give it a go right here we go so we start there again like that and we'll give ourselves our um tall part then we'll come to here Let's have a look. So we need to give ourselves our, I'm going to use a ruler for this bit, just cause I can. Uh, I don't want it to be, I want it to be about the same width as that. Just eyeball it, that'll do, like that. That will give you the, the indication, right? So we're going to come out like that. There's our tail. And then here, we're going to make that B. So we want to make something like that there. So turn it around like so. And then we're going to come from here. Let's have a look. I reckon about there would be good. Don't want it to be too big. I'll sit on there like that. Hey. Okay. 
just drawing round. That's pretty good. I like that. That works. So once you've got, you're happy with where it sits, you see, then you can. Now we'll make our dots again, join up the dots. I think that's definitely the way to go. At least you keep it in the right. Wants to be equidistant all the way around, really. A bit of a long word, but you know what I mean. Right, here we go. Like so. And then we'll take our eraser pencil. Now, where's that pink one? Just bear with me a minute. I've got a white one. I wonder if... Here's a pink one. Okay, that'll do. So we'll lose that there. And we'll lose that there. That's it. There's our letter. I reckon this is good. And also, because it's quite thick here, remember the tricks that I was showing you with putting a little uh, gap in there? That would be really perfect for this kind of... See? You put a little gap in there if you choose. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, you can always look back at last week. Right. Okay. So that's me letters. How are we doing? Yeah, there they are. Cool. Okay. There you go. Look, it's not even quarter. It's just turned quarter past. We've already done the letter. Result. So now we can move on to the beach hut. Sunny days. Hey, sunny days. Um, there. When I used to go to create and craft. Um, on a Saturday and a Sunday, sometimes uh, I'd have to stay overnight. It wasn't worth going all the way home. And um, the, the studios are in Peterborough, in, by Peterborough. And so that's quite close to Norfolk. And so Dave used to come with me and we used to go, uh, we used to explore the Norfolk coast. And there are some beautiful beautiful it starts with king's lynn and it goes all the way around you've got hun stanton um there's one called wells by sea which is glorious and that's where i saw the most beautiful little beach huts i remember them you weren't allowed to take photos of them apparently but the but i googled them and um because i remember they were really tall you know they were on stilts almost and with little steps running up to them the most glorious colors just look them up. Look up beach huts at Wells by Sea. I know. Uh, oh, no, not Wells by Sea. Wells next to the sea. Because I remember thinking, that's strange. Wells next to the sea. Okay. And um, have a look. If you, if you, if you want some inspiration on, on how to draw a beach hut, there's your inspiration but i like i say i i drew them and then i had to look at typical drew it first then i had to look at the inspiration i thought yeah that's where i remember it from but they're really easy to draw and my hope is that what it will do is it will transport you it will take you to warmer days it will take you back to when you were a kid on the beach uh it will take you back to beach balls and deck chairs and hanging out at the beach, okay, at the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. See, and straight away, I know it's really freezing everywhere. Did Marion come back to us and tell us what the weather was like in, in North Germany? I wonder. So let's have a look at the, let's have a look. So we'll put the bees to one side, okay, the bee for beach hut, and we'll get another piece of tracing paper out. Treat yourself to a pack of tracing paper. We've got this on. We definitely have got this. So we'll start with a, we'll keep it separate. Just in case you did decide that you want to put the bee chart and the bee on the same piece of artwork. Might be really nice. See, I think it would, do you know what would look quite good? You can see where I've, what I've used. I've used the marks, look, from the top. You draw any size you like, friends. But I've definitely, I was definitely kind of mindful of the letters, okay? So let's take a piece of tracing paper. 
leave the bees behind underneath so you've got the fresh piece over the top see we're going to do an overlay again and we'll use it like so and you can you can draw lines to to give you your orientation so i'm going to so that i don't make them so big i'm just going to put a couple of lines in like this so that will give me a bit of a, a guide like that. That's that that'll do. Just see, then I've got a couple of lines just to give me a guide. Okay, so if we go to there, now have a look at the two beach huts that I did. I did that one first, and it was a bit of a challenge, let's say. I wanted to make a wonky one, you know, because I thought because they are, aren't they? they? Some of them are quite ramshackle. We we have them down in Brighton as well. But in Brighton, they're really bumped up next to each other and they don't have, they're not on stilts and they're very functional and they're made of wood, you know, like old, they look to me like old pallets, really. Um, then they paint them bright and they, you know, they, they are of, they are a thing um, and you can hire them for the day. Um, but I remember the ones in Norfolk and I'm thinking, what a beautiful what a beautiful scene and they were set back against the trees on stilts and i'll never forget it i'll just remember seeing all the steps going up to them so let's give that a go shall we marion pets es ist kalt und die sonne scheint here there you go it's cold and the sun is shining nice nice cold and sunny so so what we'll do is we'll we'll draw so you've got choices you can either draw one that's open and this one is easier because you're looking at it head on now that's that doesn't mean it just depends on which angle you you sta you're standing really Winstable beach huts are on stilts they're on stilts too are they excellent so let's try this one and then we'll go easy not so easy no nah. Really easy, easy. There you go. <laughs> so all a question of perspective, isn't it? Okay. Right, you got your pencil, sharpened it, and then we'll we'll do a little bit of air drawing. You know how we air draw just to get the shape right? I mean the reason we're using tracing paper is one, because it's really easy to rub the lines out, and two, it's really easy to transfer your artwork, isn't it? to your cards or whatever you're going to do. I really am looking forward to making a set of stamps with what we design here today and on Thursday. I think they're going to be fabulous. And straight away, when you draw this, it will just, you cannot help but think about sunny days. So we're going to try this sort. So let's just get the, 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 the height right. If you like, right? The roof, if you want to work with the roof and then work from there, the roof is this high. It's yay tall, okay? So you see, if you if you like, your roof is going to be, I don't know, don't overthink it. Just go for it. It's only a bit of tracing paper. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go to my roof. I'm going to put my roof up here. So there's there's my roof. That's, that's my starting point. And I'll put my roof in and I'll air draw it first, so I get my shape right. Okay, there you go. See, there's my roof. So once I've done that, I wanna make it so that it's it sits like that. Okay, a bit of wood. It's very, they're very primitive, really. Jilly was saying, when I got into work this morning, Jilly was saying that they used to wheel them down in the Victorian times. They used to wheel the women down in the huts to the water so that, and then I, I've seen it in films where they, that's ridiculous though, isn't it? They, they used to wheel them down to the water in the hut and then they could get dressed and then they'd open the door and then they'd throw them out to the water and then they could swim around then get back in the, you know. I mean, compare that with what's going on at Brighton Beach now. <laughs> that's eye watering now, all right. In those days, not a, not even an ankle was showing. I know how times have changed. Hey, okay. so so let's don't worry about the. Let's just get the shape down first. So this is going to be a tall 
tall beach hat, tall skinny one, like that. And we'll pop the, let's, let's see. So I've got the hat, right. And I've got the, the hut there, like that, like that. This is going to be the stilts. See, let's keep it so it's not so tall. You see, the base is there and then it's on legs. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we get to there and the base is going to be about there. Otherwise, it'd be ridiculous. You could put two floors in. Okay, so we put that there like so. And then we'll, that can be, that's going to be the base like that. And then we're going to have a, let's put a door in. It needs a door. Right, so we put a door in. They're only little. So we pop a door in like that. Okay, that'll do. And then we'll put the, let's put the legs on, two big legs like that. They're the stilt legs. So that if the water comes up, they don't get soaked inside. That will work, won't it? Put a lintel in over the door. Door's a bit tall, isn't it? Grey. That you made the door, door a bit tall. This is for a, a very tall person. Let's make the door a bit quainter, shall we? Because then that gives us a bit more... Yeah, come on. Make the door a bit smaller. Because otherwise, you've got no room to put any, like a little window or anything, have you? Or a sign. Right, these are easy to draw, though. There you go. So you've got your lintel above the door, if that's what it's called. Uh, we put a heart. Should we put a heart in the door? That'll do. And we've got our, we're going to put little props, little struts in like that so the roof doesn't come off. That's nailed down tight. Yeah. And then you've got your support beam there so it doesn't all fall apart. And then we could put a little, a little, put a little window, a little round window in the top, only so that it's not like the black hole of Calcutta in there, right? So there's a little little light source there, okay? That'd be nice. In fact, this one, I would say, we'll even put a little window in here because it's quite a tall one. Let's put a window in there, like so. And then, let me show you, let me just have a think. If you want to make a window with four little panes, go like that. You see that, all right? And then put the pane in within there. That's it. That'll do. It's all right if it's sketchy. It's only supposed to be a little sketchy beach hat. Right, so let's have a look. What are we doing? It's looking good. Not bad, eh? Okay. Should we come in a bit tighter? Let's have a look if you can see it better now. Okay, so We've got the stilts in, but now we need to put the, the, the actual, the, the stairs in, right? So the stairs, let's call, the, let's say that the stairs are down here, like that. And first of all, we've got to decide where the, right, I reckon that that's about the right height for a banister, don't you? Let's have a look where I was before. Yeah, bingo. About there, right? Not too tall. So if you put the banister in about there, let's do that. And let, we could wrap it around the building a little bit, couldn't we? So that it makes a bit of sense. And it's got a bit of stability, you know? How about that? Like that, that'll do. We'll work that bit out in a minute. That looks weird. Let's just go around like, let's just get stylized here. Come on. We'll do that first, like that. We'll worry about going around the building in a minute. Right, or maybe we won't even do that. And then we need the, the struts to come all the way down. So I reckon that we want to come in about here. Let's just put them in like that. I might have to make my door a bit bigger now. Right, so there's the struts to come down. I reckon that'll work, yeah? So that's, that's the banister, if you like, like so. You got your banister in? <laughs> so it's not that hard, is it? Right, so I've done that bit and I've done that bit. I think I'm going to make my door a bit fatter. Only because otherwise... 
it just looks like an extension of the banisters. So let's make the door a bit fatter. There's nothing else going on in there, so we might as well. Right, door's a bit fatter, like that. Down comes the door, like so. Down that side, like so. There you go, door looks a bit more inviting now as well. Cool. So that's that bit. Starting to, this, when I start thickening up the lines, it's because I'm playing for time. <laughs> Here we go, so you've got legs. Now, steps. Let's have a look what I did before. Steps. So we've got one, I just kept them really simple, literally three struts. Start at the top, we'll put one here, like that. There's one. There's this side, this side view, two. There's a third one, three. There you go, easy. Do you know, I looked at the price of these. Do you know how much they, these are going for in Norfolk, Wells and Ecstasy? Last year's upwards of 80,000 pounds for one of these little beach huts. Upwards of 80,000 pounds on the Norfolk coastline. I don't know. Mad, isn't it? See, when we, when we used to live in, when we used to go to Germany all the time, and I think I've shown you this because I got one from my parents. It's at our house now. They're called a Strandkorb in the north of Germany because it was really windy. We, we used to go to the north of Germany and, um, and they have what's called a Strandkorb. And Strand means strand, beach, and Korb is a basket. And they're these fat, mat, beautiful constructions, and they're all woven, and but they they're protected on the side. So it's like we have our beach huts here, except they're called uh, Strandkorb, and they're but they're on the actual beach rather than set back off the beach. Um, and you hire them for the day, and um, and they're so lovely. They're just lovely. Look them up. Strand, strand, like the strand in London. Strand is Strand, and then Corp is K O R B, Strand Corp. And if you look it up, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're just so lovely. They're very, very pretty to look at, too. And they're weather beaten on the beach. That's what I remember. They always look really weather worn. Right. So I think we've got the, we've, the only thing we're missing here is the, is the little banners, the little railings like that. There we go. So pop a little railing in there. I think I'll only put, what do you think? Do you think I could get, I could put one down there. I'm going to put one there and I'm going to put one there. There you go. That makes sense. Got there in the end. And then I'm going to put one there as well in the middle. There. So now we're rocking. And now we can thicken it up. Once you're happy with your shape, see how quiet. I'm almost tempted, do you think, that we could come down a little bit like that? Yeah, I think that gives it more balance because it's quite a tall one, like that. Then that makes sense to have those little things to hold it in place, like a guttering. I, I like this. The reason I'm adding a bit more um, graphite as well, lead, there you go, is so that we can... transfer it and it makes absolutely no odds with this provided we haven't got any writing on it as soon as you put like something like that b for bliss if you transfer it you're going to have to rethink the writing aren't you see but this is easy this way around so we put a little heart in the door like that little peephole hmm you like i do right there's a i'm going to make that a little bit more like a chunky because it's holding up her house basically there we are there's a window nice eh and then we could transfer it so we've done that one that wasn't so bad was it hey eh? wells next to see eighty thousand pounds plus ample parking <laughs> there, I quite like that, you know. 
You can rent them, I think. I don't think it's that expensive. I'm sure you can rent them. There, isn't that pretty? What do we think? I should use a ruler on that. It looks a bit ropey. Let's keep that going there like that. Hey, okay. I've better. There. Yeah, I like this. There. What do we think? Pretty, huh? And it's very two-dimensional. It's quite f flat. But we've done that deliberately. Keep it nice and flat. And this is the door here. And then the only thing that we still have to do is the, is the stripes, because it's all planks, isn't it? So how about we do some stripes? I say we go tall on, well, it's up to you. you, you it's a bit of a, it's different, isn't it? We could do the door that way. Should we try it, see what that looks like? So I did one where the, it went that way and one where it went that way. Which do you prefer? I think I will go with the door this, no, I'm going to go the door that way. Why should I go the door that way? I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go for the main, the main building first. Let's do the planks this way first, right? I mean, it's not set in stone. You could make 10 different beach huts all next to each other and just change the stripes and change the colour and no one would ever know that they're the same. See? Just change them a little bit, make it a little bit... Let's just make one that's a little bit skew with. There you go. And then we're going to put some... That's it. Make one a little bit skew with there. Yeah. Nice. Easy to draw. And what I like is that it's making me think of warmer days ahead. Is it you as well? There we are. Oh, there's a bit that I missed a bit there. There you go. That'll do. So that's that way round on there. I reckon we should go tall on, on this bit here. Let's go this way on this one, eh? It's easier if you just use a ruler, to be fair, Bob. I need to be able to see it, though. There. Like so. Eh? What do we think? It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so we've done our... It looks a bit too chunky, that does. So we've done our first one. Ready to be transferred already. Okay. And I wanted to show you, so there's, a, there's another option there. See, so you've got that one and then you've got that one. They already look a bit different just because we've done the stripes differently. Put the, hat, put the window in a different place. You could make a, um, a window like that. Couldn't you? Like a like Mono Monopoly cheeses, you know? You know the Monopoly? Is it Monopoly? No, Trivial Pursuits. So you can make a little window like that above the door. That will change it. Like an orange there in the middle. That would look nice too. So you've got lots of different options there. Now, let's have a look. I want to take a break for a minute, let you catch up. And I'm going to show you, a, I want to show you a new, we're launching something. I'm going to do a soft launch today with my friends in the shack, only because um, they, they, they got delivered, they're being delivered this morning. We got the prototypes and I said to Paul, I, I don't want to hang on to these papers. We got the prototypes last week. The big delivery is coming today. Um, and what we've got, I, I'd like to show you these because they're rather lovely. And, um, and we're going to make them available today. I should be launching them on television. I should be showing them off on TV with something other, uh, something else, which is equally exciting. But I, I just want to show you these papers because I think you will like them. Do you remember when we, last year, we really got into tea bags and um, tea bag art and stamping on tea bags and the whole, it was around the, the, um, the retreats. And then from there, we went into lots of really lovely Japanese art. So I just want to show you what we've come up with. I think you're going to be really 
really pleased to see what we've done. We've got these really lovely um, papers. Look, Darjeeling, and they're, look, loose leaf. We've had a lot of fun. Jim, Jim and I, this is a, a collaboration, Jim and myself. And it's all either Jim's helped with some graphics, and but a lot, most of the backgrounds, the actual backgrounds are all made. I made them myself with tea stains, uh, real tea stains. And then Jim added a little flash of graphic to it to make it more interesting. Um, but you'll see here, it's tea stains and paint. So we've got Darjeeling. Uh, we've got hibiscus. See, loose leaf infusions. These are all beautiful teas. This is collage paper. These are collage papers, so they're thin. And there's a really good reason why we've done this. I'll show you them in a minute. We've got hibiscus. So you've got your browns and your yellows, just like Darjeeling. Yeah. Then you've got hibiscus, which is all reds and peaches and these colors. Really nice. Then we've got peppermint. And again, loose, loose leaf infusions. So we've got all the teals and blues. And then we've got chamomile, chamomile. And these are really, really beautiful papers. Let me show you, for example, if I show you a pack, you'll see they're much, much, much thinner than the normal papers. And the reason for this is because they're, they're collage papers. And the idea for collage is to make it, I'll show you a couple of examples that I've done. I, I did show them on Facebook last week when I, as I was, I was putting the papers through their paces to make sure that they do exactly what I want them to do. And they do, happy to report. But let me just show you here. So of course, again, like usual, there are, um, there are 12 different designs in each pack and there are four of each. The difference this time is you don't have to choose. The backs are white, and the, so there's only flooded on one side. And the reason we've done this is because they're so they're so thin, right? And there's a very good reason for that, because when you're doing collage or montage, let me show you the papers so you can see. So they're beautiful for stamping on. They're really lovely for stamping on. But they're also really nice for layering up. So if I show you this piece of artwork here, right, this back piece here is what I've used in the back. But what's interesting, and you cannot see this very well on, on you know, if you could feel it, if this was feely telly, you would, there, there is like no, no depth to it. So you can, you can layer up, you can put layers on that tears, it's very robust, really robust. It tears, um, it cuts beautifully, it stamps beautifully. You can screw it up. You can get really lovely texture on it. But the thing is that when you layer it up like this and you cut pieces out, this is all, this particular piece of artwork, all done using a couple of the, this one, that, that one there. See, I used, I used a few bits from here to make the hills, you see? this bit here, just to make the, where have I found that? It's in here somewhere. Um, but so, so this is all very, very much browns, tea bags, grungy, right? But it's all using, this is all exactly as it came, beautiful stains. So there's a lot of art. And then it goes the, the same 12 again, th three more times. So I wanted to show you that, right? Really lovely, lovely art. And, um, and there are, there are four books like this. Um, if I show you a couple of other pieces that I did, I showed you this one. So this is real interesting, like collage now. And you can see here, I've gone to the peppermint one, but do you remember that, that piece I was showing you that I used here? This is, I cut out like a crown. Then I, mush it up with a bit of a book, stuff that I got from a magazine, more papers to come, more collage papers to come, blacks and whites, this kind of thing on its way. But I thought we'd stagger it a bit. So you can see how, see it's very thin, but you can layer up on it and it doesn't, even though there's one, two, three, four, five, six, sometimes six layers there, it's still 
as thin as a single sheet, then if you want to stabilize it, you can always just paste it to, um, you can paste it to our stencil card and then you can beef it up like that. Or you can, you can use a, a white card like this and just start using that as its base, right? Just tearing and, and gluing. It's very, very, very creative. And I, I would really like, personally now, Barbara, I would really like to get into um, collage. There's, there's a whole art form around collage. And we can, because we're stampers, we could use, I, I'm going to learn. I've already signed up for a course in Brighton to learn more about it. I mean, I can't go to art university for three years and do a degree in it, but I can sign up for evening classes with a really brilliant teacher. Um, and I'm doing that. Uh, so if you'd like to join me on the journey, the, the trick with this paper is that it's so, it's thin and it's strong. That's the key. So when you're using your glues, your Mod Podge, your gel mediums, it's not going to tear. It, 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 holds its, it holds its fibers, yeah? But it's really good for stamping. It's really good. See, we could draw um, our uh, beach hats, just say, on, on, a piece of on a piece of this paper. We could draw it. We could color it in. We could cut it out. We could layer it up. We could... We could chop it up. We could. It's so. It's so good to use. Up till now, we've always had much thicker. The designer papers. They're much. They're much thicker than this. So for cutting out, this is perfect. For layering up, it's ideal. So there you go. You saw it here first. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Paul's going to launch. He's going to put these on the website. They're, they're already posted. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to get in early. Now's your chance. Um, we'll be, I'll be using these a lot in the coming months and we'll be adding to them too. But I think all in all, um, I think you'll be delighted. There was another piece of artwork. I don't know, I keep, I'm always losing the same one. I did it last week. You know, the, there was an apple that we did. I did an apple in a book. Here it is, right? I did this apple in a book. And that also, this is a, one of the um, hibiscus papers. And this is one of the hibiscus papers. So I actually, I drew the apple and the letter onto the, onto the page. There you go. But it is actually cut out. But the thing is, when you, you can't see this, it's so fine like this. It's crazy. Uh, uh, that impresses me, you know, that it, it, it takes the, you could cut it out and it doesn't, it doesn't come, it doesn't stand too proud. So there you go. That's what I wanted to showcase you. We're really chuffed. The, the, the printers are delivering today, today's delivery day. So I said, right, if today's delivery day, I want to show my friends in the shape. So that's that. And the other thing that I wanted to show you um, or wanted to tell you about was this week, just what's coming up, okay? So tomorrow, of course, Paul's in the shack with you, and then uh, he'll be doing Groovy Tuesday on, uh, at 10 o'clock. And then he's up in Peterborough, in Oundle, um, for two days doing the ODS on Wednesday and Thursday. So he'll be, he'll be showcasing um, some really beautiful groovy plates on, um, on, Tuesday, on Wednesday and Thursday, Okay, so that's on Wednesday. This is date for your diary now. Uh, six o'clock in the evening, he, he will start that. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And, um, and then on, um, so six o'clock in the evening, then nine o'clock in the evening, then on Thursday, it will be 10 o'clock in the morning and two o'clock stop permitting. But now on Saturday, um, we've got our lovely Deborah Wheeler, um, she's going to be making her debut on Create and Craft. I know. And she's a stamp girl, very, very good at stamping and making beautiful, clean, crisp art. So I think you'll enjoy her show. And she's on at one o'clock on Saturday and at four o'clock on Saturday, one o'clock and four o'clock. So I do hope that you, um, that you shout out 
cheer for 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 Deb on her debut. Deb on her debut. There you go. I think that will be that will be really exciting. I'm looking forward to that because she does do fantastic artwork and she blogs every day. And some of the artwork that she blogs is so good. I don't know if you if you follow her. Very good indeed. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy that. So so there you go. Just to recap, while you're maybe taking a screen grab of our our B for Beach Hut, um, we've got. Uh, the ODS tomorrow, it's Paul in the shack at 10 o'clock. Then the ODS is on the 17th and 18th of January. Dawn's on the 20th, uh, not Dawn, Deborah, Deb, sorry. We've got Dawn Wheeler and Deb Wheeler. That's going to be interesting. So we've got Deborah on Saturday um, at 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock. That's the 20th. Okay. So there we are. And we've drawn a B and a B for Beach Hut. I'm pretty impressed with that. So, um, so I don't think I need to keep going. I think we've done enough. And on Thursday, uh, of course, you and I will be back in the shack at seven o'clock in the evening. And, uh, and maybe what we could do on Thursday is we could uh, transfer, draw the other beach hut, the more challenging one, or you could have a little practice. And then on Thursday, we could transfer the beach hut and color it in. How's that sound? Should we do some bright and beautiful beach huts on Thursday and transport us? Ever let the fancy roam, pleasure never is at home. And it's certainly going to be um, uh, cold on Thursday. So it'd be nice, be nice to um, get in that virtual shack bus and go off to a, a lovely beach. My, I'm going to take you to um, Wells Next to Sea in Norfolk. Got any other ideas where you'd like to go? Wells Next to Sea sounds good to me. I was talking to Dave about this at the weekend because when we didn't go up to London yesterday, I said, I'm not that fussed really, you know. And the other thing is, I'm not that fussed about going abroad at the moment. I don't know whether it's because of all the, all the troubles everywhere. I just don't feel like traveling abroad. I'm sure I'm not alone. I, I, I guarantee I'm not alone, you know. And then also we watch like um, uh, Bob Mortimer and Paul Whitehouse where they, when they go fishing, they go all over, all over the, the, the British Isles. And then yesterday we were watching the guy on the train who wears the loud trousers. What's his name? Um, really good. Uh, posh. I can't remember his name now. I've drawn the blank. But uh, he, he was in, yesterday he was in Wales. And, uh, and it's just lovely, you know. And it's all, and I don't know Wales very well. And I don't know Scotland very well. And I don't even know the Lake District that well. You know, so here I am, globe trotting, you know, back and forth to, to, to America all the time. And really, I'd be quite happy and comfortable just discovering our own little island. So, so that's something that Dave and I, are, maybe it's our age, maybe it's because we're getting older. I think it's a combination of all those things, isn't it? You don't want to leave. You don't want to go too far from home. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit of everything. Hey. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. We've got loads to discuss. I hope that you like those, those collage papers, those, um, those four collage papers. They're very, very lovely, very nice to stamp on, very nice to tear, glue, um, create. Well, they're collage papers for a reason. So enjoy those, and I shall see you on Thursday. Dress up warm. Don't forget the scarf hacks, and thanks, Paul, for your help. Michael Portillo, that's his name. Michael Portillo. I love him. He's so good. So, and it's so interesting. Yeah. So there you go. Easy does it. Lots of love. Bye-bye now.